Hey, it's me, Scotty. Now, as an aviation enthusiast, I tend to gravitate towards flight games. Ace Combat, Star Fox, and Pilot Wings are some of my favorite series. Today, we're talking about Pilot Wings. Three games, three systems, all three are launch titles, meaning they released on the same day as their consoles. The original Pilot Wings came out in 1990 and will be the focus of this video. So, does Pilot Wings still hold up today? Let's find out. Pilot Wings falls into the category of simulation flight, with multiple aircraft to fly and challenges to complete. There are four vehicle types, airplane, rocket belt, hang glider, and skydiving. The goal of each level is to take off, fly through a series of rings, and land. The graphics stand out because of the use of Mode 7, a method of faking 3D visuals by taking a 2D image and warping it to give the impression of movement. Controlling aircraft in a semi-3D environment with a directional pad requires the player to perform a lot more inputs than with an analog stick. But with practice, the controls of each vehicle can be mastered. While Pilot Wings might be considered a flight sim, it offers a lot more game, so to speak, than would be typically expected of the genre. While it's fun to individually complete these challenges, you would think that it would get rather repetitive after a while, since subsequent levels do little to shake up the formula. Take off, fly through the rings, land, repeat. However, the game's structure is what helps it stay interesting. Rather than have the player complete levels in a set order, the order of levels is up to the player to decide. Have enough of the hang glider levels? Do the airplane ones instead. Rather than completing each level and simply moving on, you get a score based on how smooth the landing was, how long it took to complete the mission. Discussion of relevant stakeholder perspectives, this is my engineering report. Thing is, you don't have to do everything perfectly in order to move on to the next set of challenges, or flight class in this case. As long as you accumulate enough points by the end of each flight class, you're good to go. There is a risk of falling too far behind and having to start over, but this incentivizes the player to fly well so that if you screw up, there's a chance to come back. It's still challenging, but it bypasses frustration by allowing the player to capitalize on what they're good at in order to make up for the stuff they're not so good at. The bonus levels are where stuff gets really interesting. If you land on one of these impossible moving platforms, you have a chance to win bonus points by completing these mini-games that count towards your final score. It's not great game design because you can jump off a high dive in a penguin suit. It's great game design because when you do, you realize that you already qualify for the next flight class and can skip all the rest of the levels. Wow! Pilot Wings does not skip on the finale either. The instructors are captured by the Dark Syndicate, and it's up to you to fly the rescue helicopter. Yep. A man has fallen into the river in Lego City. Start the new rescue helicopter. Hey! Build the helicopter. And off to the rescue. Prepare the lifeline. Lower the stretcher. And make the rescue. The new emergency collection from LEGO City! Yeah, I totally just lost my credibility. Anyway, all these design choices mesh to create a game that is forgiving in nature. It appeals to casual audiences, but at the same time rewards advanced play. Pilot Wings may look like a 38-year-old game, but it certainly doesn't play like one. Fun doesn't age, and I find myself sitting down every once in a while to enjoy a nice session of piloting. 